I believe you're the one who planted the seed in me years ago, and, and, and I followed it religiously, and I, I built up solely with this, that beans are the soil. That you can take all the foods, all the probiotics you want, but if you don't have the soil in there for them to grow, you're basically just flushing out of, out of your system. I love that analogy because that's that's exactly right. It's the soil to the, to make them grow. That's right because beans in particular are rich in a uh, resistant starch, and the word it's called resistant starch because it's resistant to enzymatic degradation. It means our enzymes don't break it down. That means when the when the can of beans or the cup of beans says two hundred calories, we know it's not two hundred calories because there's a percent of those calories that are resistant to deg enzymatic degradation. They can't be broken down and absorbed. So they pass through us and are degraded by bacteria. And when the bacteria change, them, change the carbohydrate, these starches, into fat, actually a fat called butyrate predominantly, mm -hmm. but, it, but it happens so far down in the small intestines, the distal portion of the small intestines, or beginning of the large intestines, that 90% of those calories don't get absorbed into the bloodstream. They pass through into the toilet bowl. So they increase stool fat. So when we eat beans, we get more calories in the toilet bowl, mm -hmm. less calories in our body. The carbohydrate calories that are there are absorbed very slowly, like a calorie every minute, as opposed to 100 calories a minute. So we don't raise insulin, which is a fat storage hormone that promotes, say, the replication of cancer. So the beans are absorbed very, very slowly. Mm -hmm. And the bacteria, they the bacteria that, that now are um, out the soil promotes the growth of these healthy bacteria that now start to live in our gut and start to coat the villi and now create, now lower the glycemic load of other foods we eat that are not beans, which scientists call the second meal effect. That means if you regularly eat beans, mm -hmm. your whole diet, your whole dietary portfolio now is low, has a lower glycemic effects because of the bacteria buildup from the regular consumption of beans. Woohoo! So on, on, on that beautiful bean, I, I love that. What was that? Boston baked beans and they had the dog roll that beautiful bean footage. Uh, on that, on that bean footage note, some people, and, and I've had them even call into the show, say, yeah, Michael, you're saying that beans are good, but haven't you heard the news about lectins? Beans are terrible. You need to stay away from beans. You know, every once in a while, every five or 10 years, we have some crazy idea comes out when some person comes out with some fad or gimmick to try to scam people, you know, to make a buck or whatever their motivation is. Maybe some people are funded by, you know, big industry to try to confuse people about health and nutrition. But this is one of the, this is a notorious scam. And it really, because we know that bean consumption is associated with longer life in every study ever studied. In other words, the, the, well, if we look at the blue zones around the world, mm -hmm. all populations eat lots of beans. If we look at the amount of beans eating, eaten in blue zones, we found that those, part, those um, groups that eat more beans live longer. And those are the people that are live, the, live the longest of those three regular beans. So much so that for every tablespoon of beans eaten, you see 8% increase in longevity. And we see lectins, the dangerous part of beans, the lectins that are only, only dangerous in things you don't cook. When you sprout them or you cook them, they don't have gluten. Um, red blood cells, they don't have any danger anymore. So beans are rich in, in powerfully longevity promoting anti-cancer materials. And this book you're talking about, I don't have to know if I should mention the name of the book or the name of the, the physician who wrote it, didn't supply a shred of evidence to support that contention. And what people check the references in that book when he said, when he had a footnote mm -hmm. and he made a claim, if you check what the reference said, it did not support that claim. So it was for, it was actually the book is the foundation of the book is a lie. He'll say something like um, beans were shown to cause irritation of the stomach lining and increased risk of autoimmune conditions. And then you put and then reference to a study and then you pull the study, read what the study said. It didn't show anything like that claim he just made. Then he has another claim. And then he, so every claim in that book was not supported by scientific evidence or studies and the whole baseline theory of the book has been um, adequately disproven. So there's no valuable information in that book. It's really sad that it had such a negative effect on people, on the potential for people to achieve good health because it has them afraid to, to eat fruits and vegetables and beans. And that's what the book was intended to do, you know, because that's what people, because there's billions of dollars being spent all the time to sabotage people's good health. We know the food industry, whether it's the meat industry, the sugar industry, or the processed food industry, or the fast food industry, or the, or the, or the bottlers, whatever, whatever it is, we know that there's a big 
uh, there's a lot of money out there to try to confuse people, whether it's the egg industry, the dairy industry, they're, they're all trying to produce studies to negate what the studies that are not commercially affiliated are showing. So people are confused and throw up their hands and say, I don't know what to eat. And here's, and, and this guy, you know, came up with a creative way he could make himself stand out in a unique fashion and, and come up with some maybe supplement or some idea how he could make a, you know, become rich off this scam. Yeah. So it's a scam.